Hello everyone. Today we're going to talk about one of my all-time favorite cameras, the Fujifilm X-Pro1. The first X-Pro camera re ever released, the first Fujifilm camera with an X-Trans sensor. And if you're asking people on the internet what they think about this camera, they're going to say that it's outstanding, that it's amazing, that it has a certain look, that Fujifilm put their magic juice in it and some secret unicorn powder that they found deep within the Mount Fuji and they just sprinkle all of that dust particles that are magical over this camera and that resulted in this camera providing amazing images with amazing colors. Well, something like that is what you're gonna hear and it's all true. That's exactly what Fujifilm did with this camera. Because this camera is slightly old, it was released back in 2012. It's slow, it's a compromise to work with it. The autofocus is slow compared to with modern cameras. Not that bad though. And overall, it's a compromise to work with it. But it's all worth it because this camera provides a unique experience that you don't really get from many other cameras. Uh, this camera combines the vintage aesthetics with the film aesthetic in a digital format. And I know that's a thing people always throw around with on the internet saying this camera has the film look, this has a cinema look and stuff like that. But honestly, this camera does. What I mean with that is that the images you get from this sensor are not necessarily realistic looking when it comes to colors. It's more like the colors and the look you get out of this camera is looking good. For example, if you compare uh, it to a film stock, for example, take Kodak Portra, that film stock is extremely good for portraits because it has a certain look to it that has warm tones and it's makes the skin tones looking very good. Well, this camera has that, not that, but a certain look, a look similar to a film stock. And that's a thing many cameras doesn't have. Besides that, you also have that many of those costume presets and film simulation and costume settings that you could where you could tune the colors and the JPEG profile that you get out of this camera like the modern Fujifilm cameras. You can even take the files, change the metadata afterwards and get all of those film simulations. I have a video about how to do that and the link will be in the description. So even if this camera is old and it only has a, only has a 16.3 megapixel camera. It's not really a compromise when we are talking about image quality. It's simply a timeless design of this camera. The camera is a timeless classic. It's a modern classic. That's there's so many words to put behind this camera, and I think that most people who use this camera are going to agree. Other things that are nice with this camera is the hybrid viewfinder in combination with the electronic viewfinder. It's just a flip of a switch and you have the both of the best of two worlds. So you could choose whatever suit your shooting style better. However, keep in mind that if you're using the optical viewfinder, my experience is that the autofocus is slightly faster. Talking about autofocus, this camera has a contrast-based autofocus system, so it's not really the fastest in the world and not always that accurate, but I think it's good enough. And especially if you combine it with the Fujifilm F2 lenses and the modern lenses, it's a solid performer. Uh, I use the older lenses a lot on this camera too. For example, the 35 millimeter 1.4. Well, it works great, but it's not a fast performer. So if you're gonna shoot like action shots and things like that, well, this is not the camera for you. Even though this is an older camera released in 2012, it still stands 
the ground's pretty strong compared to new and modern cameras. And one reason for that is that the extra sensors on the Fujifilm cameras doesn't have a low pass filter or anti aliasing filter. And what that means is that these cameras provide a high amount of details and they also provide a noise pattern that are more organic compared to a traditional Bayer sensor. So I think we kind of established that the X-Pro one is not about the technical specifications. It's all about the feel that the camera provides. It's all about the colors the camera provides. It's all about the look of the camera, the look of the images. And it is a camera uh, that you would pick up for those reasons. So overall, the quality of the camera is top notch, even if it lacks some features as weather sealing and stuff like that. It's not a big deal. Fun thing with this camera is that every time I go out shoot, if it's good weather at least, if it's not raining, I am standing in my cabinet and I'm looking on the extra X Pro 3, X Pro 1, and I'm like, which camera should I bring today? And Every time when I'm standing there, I kind of want to take this camera. But the newer, more modern camera, which also provides excellent colors and are an amazing camera, it's more efficient. So it's always this compromise between like, do I take this older camera that has an amazing sensor or do I take this newer camera that doesn't have that amazing sensors, but are overall a better camera even now it sounds like i'm saying that the x-pro 3 is a bad camera it doesn't uh, i doesn't say that it's an amazing camera where the colors is just as amazing seeing as well not as this obviously but the pictures and the colors from all fujifilm cameras are amazing but the colors you get from the first extra sensor is in my opinion the best the X-Pro1 is a camera that I kind of feel when I pick it up, it becomes an expansion of me. And I'm able to capture amazing images with this camera. It's a pleasure to use it. It gives one of those, it gives me that feeling that I enjoy using this camera. It's not just a tool, it's a fun thing to use. And a camera that provides that feeling, that is something special to work with, I think when you are choosing a camera that's what you should go for if you don't need a tool a work tool so to say so in a world where technology is constantly evolving and getting better it's kind of liberating and very rewarding and refreshing to use this older camera which has stood the test of the time and have proven to be a worthy camera a camera where you kind of have to slow down a little bit think more about your image think more about the composition and be more aware of what you are shooting rather than just spray and pray this camera is for photographers who kind of appreciate the past and the future at the same time and want something special that sticks out from the crown, something that provides a unique shooting experience and this camera definitely provides that things. Let's answer another question that I'm quite often answering in this video and that is if I would consider to use this camera for a professional shoot and yes, absolutely. I've done it, I'm gonna do it at other times and this is a camera I would pick up if I am looking for a special look. And it's also my number one black and white shooter. We talked a lot about colors today, but the black and white pictures you get out of this camera are the closest thing I ever got to analog black and white film pictures in a digital format by no doubt and especially if you combine it with a vintage lens are so close to get film like looking black and white pictures from this camera than i experienced in any other camera perhaps the leica monochromic camera could perform similar but this one cost around 300 to 500 dollars and well you don't get a Leica for that money. And 
talking about Leicas and that kind of cameras, this is a kind of camera that I would put in the same field of cameras. It's a modern classic that's in 20 years time from now on gonna be a classic. So in, many, in, in some ways, maybe it's the perfect opportunity to pick up an X41 today because they are still cheap and I think they might increase in value because, because the Fujifilm X41 is a timeless classic in 2023 20, and beyond. Uh, you are not going to get disappointed of the images you get out of this camera. If you want to see more films related to older Fujifilm cameras where I'm asking myself if old is gold, check out the full playlist here where I have more Fuji related content. And if you don't want to miss that out, click here to subscribe. Thanks for watching. I see you later.